So by now we've seen how to associate to a space, capital X, and a base point, little x, on that space, a group called pi1 of x of x, which consists of homotopy classes of loops in x based at the base point. And you might ask, well, what happens if you use a different base point? Do we get a different group? Well, a priori, yes, we get a different group. But what we're going to see in this video is if I have a path from x to y, let's say delta, then I actually get an isomorphism from pi1 of x at x to pi1 of x at y. Or here we are, it's an isomorphism. So if x is not a path-connected space, like, for example, this space, right, a union, disjoint union of a torus and a sphere, you could pick a base point over here, and you could pick a base point over here, and the fundamental groups have nothing to do with one another. So this isomorphism isn't going to hold in general, it's only if you can find a path from x to y. Moreover, if you pick a different path, you might get a different isomorphism between these groups. Right, an isomorphism is a thing, it's a map from, from one group to the other, which has an inverse. Um, but you, you can get different isomorphisms from different paths. So what's the idea? The idea is that I, I, if I start with a loop based at y, so my, my map is actually going to go this way, from pi1 at y to pi1 at x. So I start with a loop at y and I have a path from x to y. What I can do to get a loop at x is, looking at the picture, I can go along delta, around gamma, and then back along delta. So this map is going to send gamma to delta, gamma, delta inverse. So that looks a lot like conjugation, right? So it's not quite conjugation because delta is not an element of either group, right? Delta is a path, it's not a loop, it's a path from x to y. But nonetheless it looks a lot like conjugation. So the claim is this map is an isomorphism. Well, I guess first the claim is that it's well defined. and that it's a homomorphism, and that it's invertible, and that'll show it's a, an isomorphism. To see it's well-defined, all I have to do is to check that if I pick a homotopic loop gamma, I get a homotopic loop over here. And that's not hard, because if I have a homotopy of loops, gamma s, over here I have a homotopy which is delta inverse concatenated with del uh, with gamma s concatenated with delta, which gives you a homotopy from wherever gamma zero goes to wherever gamma one goes. I should give this map a name. I'll call this map f delta. So to prove it's well defined, uh, I'll give these numbers one, two, and three. So to see it's well defined, uh, if gamma s is a homotopy, based homotopy, um, from gamma 0 to gamma 1, then delta dot gamma s, sorry, delta inverse dot gamma s dot delta is a based homotopy. From f delta gamma 0 to f delta gamma 1. And that proves it's well defined. If I want to say it's a homomorphism, that's not too hard. All right, so um, cf delta is a homomorphism. All I need to do is to say f delta applied to 
alpha concatenated with f delta applied to beta is delta inverse alpha delta delta inverse beta delta the delta and the delta inverse cancel so i go along delta and then back again that's homotopic to the constant path um, so these cancel and i get delta inverse alpha beta delta which is f delta of alpha beta also it's not too hard to see that if i go along delta do the constant loop and come back that's homotopic to the constant loop so that's saying that the identity goes to the identity finally why is it uh, an isomorphism why is it invertible well f delta of gamma is delta inverse gamma delta so i claim that if you go backwards along delta you get an inverse for f delta right so the map f that transports the loop backwards along delta instead of forwards along delta um, is an inverse for f delta right you can check this this is just saying f delta inverse of f delta of gamma is delta delta inverse gamma delta delta inverse this delta and delta inverse cancel this delta and delta inverse cancel so i just get gamma so f delta inverse composed f delta is the identity okay so as long as we have a path we get an isomorphism between fundamental groups given all this we now can actually say what happens if we have a free homotopy and we've been talking about based homotopy so far but now we know what happens when we have a free homotopy so free homotopy of loops remember a free homotopy is one where the base point can move so suppose uh, gamma is some element of the fundamental group based at x uh, in fact let's say gamma 0 and gamma 1 are elements of the fundamental group based at x and suppose that they are freely homotopic via some free homotopy gamma s so gamma 0 is based at x uh, gamma 1 is based at x but gamma s is allowed to go wherever it wants so it traces out some kind of a tube and in particular the base point of the loop varies along this red loop So it starts being base at x in other words gamma 0 at time 0 is at x gamma s at time 0 might be over here then over here then over here until it comes back to x right so free homotopies don't have to come back to pi 1 of x but i'm saying what happens if they do right we can actually change the homotopy class and how does it change well if this red loop is called delta then from what we just said on the previous page gamma 1 equals delta inverse uh have i got this right around gamma let's back go back and have a look i think it's the other way around isn't it gamma zero is delta inverse gamma one delta right if i go around delta around gamma one and then back around delta i can pull that back until I get to gamma zero and now this is really a conjugation statement 
right? Because delta is a loop based at x. So this is saying gamma 0 and gamma 1 are conjugate. in pi 1 x based at x and depending on which loop you pick you can get many different conjugates of the same loop so this is why I said the the map from pi 1 of x in this case back to itself depends on which path you pick to identify the two base points or the, the base point in itself so this implies that if you have freely homotopic loops they're conjugate in pi 1 so free homotopy classes of loops are conjugation classes in the fundamental group this is actually a really useful fact because for example if your fundamental group is abelian like the integers conjugacy, conjugacy is really boring because abelian groups everything commutes so the delta and the delta inverse will cancel so in an abelian group there's no difference between homotopy and free homotopy so let's write this down corollary um, if pi 1 is abelian then two loops based at x are freely homotopic if and only if they're based homotopic this is great because often in geometric examples the homotopies we construct move the base point and although it's very convenient for setting up the algebraic structure in the first place to have this base point so that we really get a group structure in the end the, the set of free homotopy classes is often all you need but this would have been a bad thing to introduce to begin with because the set of conjugacy classes in a group has no extra structure it's just a set so by picking a base point and tying ourselves down to start with, we were able to see the connection to algebra and the, the group structure coming from the uh, concatenation of loops. Okay, so now we know what happens if you change the base point along a path.